Befriending commas. Mastering non-restrictive clauses in English. Hello learners. Today, we'll be taking a fascinating journey into the world of non-restrictive clauses in English. One of the key aspects we'll focus on is how to use commas in these types of clauses. By the end of this lesson, you'll have a better understanding and confidence when using non-restrictive clauses. Before we jump into examples, let's quickly recap what non-restrictive clauses are. Non-restrictive clauses, also known as non-defining or non-essential clauses, provide additional information that isn't necessary for understanding the sentence. If you remove these clauses, the sentence will still make sense. The key thing to remember is that non-restrictive clauses are always separated by commas, brackets, or dashes. For today, we're going to focus on the use of commas. So why are commas important in non-restrictive clauses? Well, they act as a sort of verbal pause, signaling to the reader that the information following isn't critical to understanding the sentence. Remember, commas are used before and after the non-restrictive clause within a sentence. This is crucial for proper punctuation and meaning. Now let's dive into some examples. 1. My brother, who is an artist, just opened a new exhibit. In this sentence, who is an artist, is our non-restrictive clause. The sentence would still make sense without it. My brother just opened a new exhibit. The clause simply provides extra information about the brother. 2. The book, written by J.K. Rowling, is one of my favorites. Here, written by J.K. Rowling, is the non-restrictive clause, giving extra information about the book but not essential for the sentence to make sense. Remember to always check your sentence without the non-restrictive clause. If it still makes sense, you're on the right track. One common mistake is forgetting to use the second comma to close off the non-restrictive clause. Remember, it's crucial to use commas before and after your non-restrictive clause within a sentence. If you forget the second comma, the reader might become confused, and your sentence might become hard to understand. For example, I bought a new dress, which is red looks stunning on me. This sentence is confusing. But with the second comma, I bought a new dress, which is red, looks stunning on me. The sentence becomes clear. And that's it for today, folks. Remember, practice is key when mastering non-restrictive clauses and their punctuation rules. So don't shy away from using them in your writing. They can add extra flavor and detail to your sentences making your writing more engaging and interesting. Until next time, keep practicing and happy learning.